Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. To my left, as always, Tony Hager. This is Global Wrestling News. Well, the college wrestling season is in full swing across the country with competition looming. And you know what that means, Tony? It means predictions and rankings. They're going up on all the national media sites. And it's time for our takes. First up, we've got a 125 and I start. Thomas Gilman, my fave to take the weight class. The University of Iowa is hungry for a national champ and I think they'll get it done. Tom? Yeah, this weight class is loaded with experience at the top. Seniors, juniors, Joey Dance, Virginia Tech. He's going to have something to say about that. I think also if Dylan Peters from Northern Iowa, if he's 100% healthy, he'll be in the mix there too, but Thomas Gilman, you're right. I think this is his weight class. All right. You think Iowa can get another champ at 133? This one's a balance for me. I don't know. Well, back-to-back -back for Iowa, I think uh, their favorites here, Cody Brewer, Nation Nation Garrett, them out of this weight class really opens this up. But Nathan Tomasillo, 125-pounder right. from Ohio State, he's bumping up. Unbelievable from his feet. Thomas, you know, Thomas Gilman pushed him a little bit last year. Corey Clark is a different story from his feet on top. I think Corey Clark, with his ability to, to ride people, if he can get on top early, he's going to be the, the favorite winning a, a national title for the Iowa Hawkeyes. All right, let's go to 141. I think it's wide open. You got Dean Heil, you got Ashnell, Jack, and even Meredith, right, after that amazing run last year. If you put my foot to the fire, I think I'm going to take Dean Heil. Yeah, Dean Heil's a favorite on almost all the rankers' websites. Joy McKenna, though, I think he's the guy. Last year, took a little bit of upset. He's still young, but that one year is what I think Joey McKenna needed. He's my favorite to win that title. We go to 149. It's all about the Zane train. Zane Rutherford from Penn State. Arguably the Dan Hodge Trophy winner from last year. Brandon Sorensen from Iowa and LeVon Mays will contend, but Zane just blows people out and apart. What do you think? Yeah, I think Penn State has a champ there. And again, at 157 pounds, Jason Nolf, he scores in bunches. He, he's just deadly from his feet. Sometimes he almost gives up almost too, much, too many points. We saw that last year. He got knocked off. This is the year that Penn State goes back to back. All right, let's go to 165. Alex Deeringer on the weight. Everybody worked away from him, and this year, Imar could fill those shoes. I mean, actually, he probably will fill the shoes. He's a two-time national champ, after all. Only one blemish on the record, to my recollection. Yeah, Imar's the guy. We we kind of saw a little you know blemish in his arsenal last year, getting defeated. He's bumping up. This is his weight class at 165 pounds. Up at 174 pounds, Zahid Valencia. Watch out. He's in the building going to 174 pounds. He's got tons of freestyle success, and that has transferred over into the folk style, I think. He's going to test Bo Jordan, even though, I mean, he'll test him, but I think Bo Jordan has the upper hand. Amazing from the neutral position. So Zahid Valencia is going to have to work his spots in order to get past Bo Jordan, I think. Yeah, just because you're wrestling for a Division One program doesn't mean you're going to walk in and win everything. There's a whole lot of guys that are a lot like that coming out of high school. Let's go to 84 pounds. You know who I'm a big fan of? You're a Gabe Dean. Gabe, Gabe, Gabe Dean, Dean fan. Gabe Dean. He's not flashy. Hard to scout. Just gets the job done. Did so at the national championships. Don't be surprised to see him two, three in some rankings, but he's my number one all the way. Yeah, I think I, I think starting the season he's number one, but he could he's been known to take a couple losses, so we could see him down there maybe, like you said, two or three. Uh, 197 and 285, really, there's, there's clear-cut favorites. Jaden Cox, yep. Kyle Snyder, both these guys, Olympic medalists, Olympic gold medalists for Kyle Snyder. These guys are huge favorites to bring home a national title. All right, team race for me. It comes down to, get this down, mark your calendars, Ohio State, Oklahoma State. Penn State may be a distant three or four. Iowa's got to be in there. i got to believe they're in there for sure. Yeah, I mean, they've been known to outperform their seeds. What are your thoughts on the national hunt for the big picture? And that's the big prize, the big trophy. Well, Penn State's got those guys that are going to come away with those individual national titles. They lack a little bit of depth. So, But they've been known to outperform those seeds. So if they do that, they are going to be right there with Oklahoma State, Ohio State, that has a really well-balanced team. Iowa, like you said, if they start a true freshman, Alex Marinelli, I think that gives them a shot to, to come home with a trophy. We'll I, see. Like, I like Marinelli, too. All right, after the break, the head coach of the University of Northern Iowa is all fired up about a lot of things, including his young squad. That'll be next. You're watching GWN, powered by McBride Max.
Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. All right, Doug Schwab and the University of Northern Iowa usually have very high expectations for each and every season. The Northern Iowa Panthers are made up by 27 underclassmen and are led by two-time All-American Dylan Peters, also three-time NCAA qualifier Cooper Moore. Let's take a look at what Doug Schwab had to say at his conference. Always excited to get the season going, but I think if you, when you look at our home, home schedule and what we have this year, uh, and then the group of kids that you have coming back that we're kind of sitting and waiting, and then the group of kids that have been able to compete for us. Um, and I, if you're not excited for you and I wrestling right now, something's wrong. Um, I know I know that I am, and I know what I've seen in the room this spring and summer. And not just, uh, you know, not just the Dylan Peters, not just the Cooper Moores, uh, not just the Max Thompsons, but the other guys uh, and how they're progressing too. I mean, that's, that's what excites me as a coach, and, and seeing these guys grow and develop. Um, in the last in the last six months has been really exciting. I think it's a, it's the biggest growth spurt we've had as a group um, since I've been here. Um, and, and a lot has to do with the group of kids that you have in the room right now and the standard that they're setting for themselves on and off the mat. Uh, there was no doubt that the freshman group that we brought in last year is a special group. Um, and I think we knew that coming in. And they've raised everyone's level and expectations and I think they've got everyone where they're kind of on fire right now and, and excited and looking forward to the season. Um, and then trying to, to temper that with, hey man, today's the day and we got to continue to get better. And not too, getting too caught up into looking forward to what competition, but how much growth we can have from now to the end of the season. Because uh, that's really what we're looking for. And we're just looking for continued growth and, and to look at whatever opsos coming our way. And we had some last year. You know, you got a guy like Dylan Peters, he tears his ACL in December. Um, he used that obstacle as a way to, to, to motivate him. And, now for him this year, he's going to be in such a better place because he knows what he can handle. Um, he placed, he placed. You know, you say on one leg, but he, he placed. He did place on, you know, on one leg. It's 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 hard to wrestle that way um, when you're hurt. But I can tell you what, he made up his mind right away. And to me, that's that's very indicative of of, of our team and how we're going to move forward from from having any type of setbacks. I mean, that's how we're going to look at him. Every setback's an opportunity, um, and he epitomized that. Uh, and he's going to be stronger this year. You know, everyone's kind of asking, well, where's Dylan Peters at? Where's Dylan Peters at? Um, he's back on the mat. You know, we're working in him, in him into it. Um, but the great thing is, is, is we don't just have Dylan Peters. <laughs> you just start looking up and down our lineup. And, and I'm not, I'm going to leave some guys out, but, uh, you know, someone's going to have to step up for a while for him. And you've got a guy like Tanner Roy or a guy like uh, Jay Schwarm who are ready to do that. Um, and they're both chopping at the bit because, and I, I want to be the guy that steps out there, and I want to be the guy that takes Peter's spot uh, and don't give it back to him. I mean, that's kind of how we're talking to those guys. Uh, you know, a guy like Elber back, and did he have the season he won last year? 100% no, but he learned a lot. And we kind of talk about those, those obstacles and getting weight control, going through a whole season as opportunities and learning from him, and he's done it. Um, he's, he's a lot better wrestler right now. You know, Kothi tore his ACL last year, another obstacle, but he's going to be better. He's going to be better for that. Uh, he's back healthy and been wrestling. 
uh, him and Hodges are going to scrap and battle. Uh, 49, I think everyone's excited to see Max Thompson get out there and compete. I know I am, um, and I know he is too. But then you, you get a guy like Hunter Washburn who talk about those guys that are that are behind maybe the front guy that are pushing him. He's one of those guys, and he's made a huge jump in the last year. Um, 57, and, and I'm kind of going into where we, we got some depth now. I don't think I've ever had this much depth on, on our team. Uh, and sometimes depth takes time. I want to have depth the first year, but to be able to have depth the first year, not always realistic. Um, but now we have we have quality depth. We have guys that can wrestle and compete at a high level. And if something happens where there is a, where there's a stumble, somebody gets hurt, it's not there's a big drop off. This guy, he can step in and he can, he can perform at a really high level and he expects to perform at a really high level. I mean, last year the Panthers had three wrestlers ranked in the MAC preseason, and this year they have six ranked. I mean, what do you make of this young team? You went to the press conference. Yeah, I mean, these these guys are are loaded. They're ready for bear here. The the redshirt freshmen. This is their opportunity. In order for them to be successful in the MAC, though, Cooper Moore, he's got to be back healthy. He's got to be mentally healthy as well. Last year he took some lumps, so him back in the lineup going to be, be a big boost to this team. Josh Albert really needs to figure out his weight class, how to cut weight. Talked to him a little bit about that. I think he's going to be a, you know, a good contender at 133 pounds to be on the award stand. So a uh, lot of great young talent. All right, well, Max Thompson impressed me at the Midlands last year. So a four-timer from Iowa. People in the state of Iowa are looking forward to seeing him compete again. Yeah, he, the people in Iowa, they're eager. He's eager. I think Midlands was really a, a good test for him, kind yeah. of put him in his place a little bit about where he needed to, to put that level of, of competition, his mindset, you know, way, way, way big difference between high school and college. I think yeah. he found that. 149 pounds, though, is absolutely stacked. I see him as like a round of 12, guys. I mean, from eight on top, th this weight class is stacked. So, I mean, I mean, round of 12, he could squeak in there a little bit. You caught up with Max up at the University of Northern Iowa. Let's take a look. I'm just extremely excited to finally get out in front of those fans and Especially have that panther on my chest, and I know going through my redshirt year, um, there's a little bit of me that wanted to go out there and re represent you and I. But it was definitely best for me to redshirt a year, and I know I've gotten stronger and better technically. So, with those injuries that did happen last year, 149 pounds. I mean, was there ever a question? Did you ever talk to Doug about stepping in that lineup? Was it ever a question? Uh, I'm sure it was always a question, but. What it came down to was building for the future and the best thing for our program in the future was keeping you at shooting. Overall, it was just a great day up at Cedar Falls with Doug Schwab company. Just being around Schwab, you just get that feeling like this team is going to be successful. And last year was so disappointing for everybody around the Cedar Falls, the Panther train. This year, top five, top 15 team, I think, in St. Louis. Isn't the MAC conference championships aren't they going to be in cedar falls this year yeah mac championships earn cedar falls so that's going to give them a leg up i think you know if they can get some guys through that mac championships get some more qualifiers there that's going to give them some extra points possibly could slip into that top 10. i mean, i think it's really important that schwab and company finish in the top 10 they haven't done that in recent years but something tells me the guys they've got on the roster will get the job done this year, they may be knocking on the door to championships for the future. All right, after the break, we're going to take a look at another NWCA All-Star Classic bout. This time, it'll be Illinois versus Nebraska, a classic Big Ten matchup. That's next on GWN, presented by Casey General Store. original or flatbread supreme pizza for only $13.99. Casey's, famous for pizza. Cookies, sauces, and seasonings are business, but food is our passion. Our secret ingredient is cookies flavor enhancer and all-purpose seasoning. It makes pretty much everything taste better. 
You can use it on meats and in marinades, veggies and seafood, try it on pasta, and even popcorn. Pick up a bottle at your local grocer and enhance the flavor of your favorite foods. Cookies For more ideas and recipes, visit cookiesbbq.com. Cookies is the one. Well, a pair of returning All-Americans have agreed to meet at the 51st Annual NWCA All-Star Classic. It takes place November 5th at Cleveland State University's Wolstein Center. Zane Richards of Illinois versus Eric Montoya. They're going to meet for the fifth time with Richards holding a 3-1 advantage in the series. We caught up with Montoya and Richards to discuss the upcoming bout. What are the changes? What can we expect to see from last year to this year uh, from you and what you've been working on throughout the summer, the spring and summer, uh, as we head to November 5th. What can we expect to see uh, in a different Zane Richards? Uh, he's certainly different. He's better. You know, he's tougher. He's meaner. Uh, but for the most part, technically, you know, I can't reveal all the secrets to you, Scott. Don't want to give the uh, the opposition, you know, some leeway. But no, I, I'm i kidding. Uh, just, you know, just, just better better wrestling. Uh, not, no, no secrets. You know, w- what you see is kind of what you get. I'm not... I'm not the kind of guy who's got a bunch of weird stuff uh, going on with my wrestling style, but uh, you know, it's 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 hard to stop me, and so it, and it's getting harder and harder to stop me. And I'm getting more, you know, my percentages on finishing takedowns and getting two takedowns are getting better. I'm giving myself more opportunities and uh, just you know, making my wrestling game better in general. So I, I think that's what you can expect. You know, you li- you live and you learn. You wrestle and you learn compete and you learn it's 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 just experience and uh you know I'm I I'm, I'm I got a good room I got a good room got good partners and so I think I'm just um I'm just I, I'm just pushing myself to a higher level I don't know if I'd necessarily say like oh I got better at this or this or or whatever you know um uh I I, I just feel like I'm I'm just a a tougher wrestler uh I I, I think maybe um just my position i guess if you if you want to talk about something technical i think uh maybe in the past i was a little bit like s- scared at the beginning of matches cuz guys would come out and they try you know they try to come out and push you around right away and get get a good lead and then they just try to hang out and, and just try to run away the rest of the time so i've been uh i try to focus on on um shutting people down right away and like really putting a high pace on people so so that that you know, I don't have to play catch up every single time, or, or, uh, or you know, give up two or two takedowns in the first period, and then you know let let that play a factor. So I think I think just position, of course, I think using my hands and moving my feet. That's been what I've been trying to focus on a lot lately. And uh, I think you know I've always been tough on top, but um, I think I think this year. I, not not think I, I know I'm, I'm gonna get turns on, on the best guys that that's a that's a big thing too so come out get your tickets uh it's gonna be a great show i'm gonna put on a show it's gonna be bloodbath fight scrap war whatever you want to call it and um it's gonna be well worth your time and your money I mean, Richards on paper is the favorite. He's got the most recent win over Montoya, defeating him, what, 5-1 to one at the Big Ten Championships. Why would Montoya take this bout? Hey, you, you never really know why these guys are, I mean, if they were the first choice. But I think uh, NWCA looking at this kind of like a grudge match because Montoya took some lumps to Richard at, yeah. at the beginning, ended up majoring him in 2015 towards the end, 2016. It was all Richards. Though. Wasn't it like a ten-one score, right? Well, well, uh, Montoya majored him ten to one, but then in the Big Ten Championships, Richard beat him five to one. The score was a little bit kind of not what you saw on paper. Richards really kind of dominated. Montoya took some shots, desperation shots that uh, you know he probably didn't need to have to do, but uh, you know that's what propelled Richards to the Big Tens. I agree. I think it is a grudge match. We're going to take a quick time out. Quick hits are up next. You're watching Global Wrestling News, powered by Yellow Blue Ecotech. Stay tuned. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. 
the warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defense so defend what you have built. Right now, get any large original or flatbread Supreme Pizza for only $13.99. Casey's, famous for pizza. In this arena, you're either the hunter or the hunted. A hunter needs armor. Earn the right to be a Danmar warrior. Headgear forged in the industrial north for the toughest wrestlers of all ages. Born in the US of A, work with us to make your custom headgear. Warriors take hits. For better breathing and vision, stay tough with the Warrior Face Guard. Dan Mon. Warriors need it. Warriors earn it. All right, Cadet World teammates Travis Whitlock Jr. and Roman Bravo Young have verbally committed to wrestle for Penn State. Any surprise here? Uh, th this, I think it's a big surprise that uh, Roman Bravo Young went to Penn State. Uh, this is a, a huge pickup for them. I mean, you could add Indiana's Joe Lee, and then the Nittany Lions will have three of the top ten wrestlers in the class of 2018. 2018 already. We're already looking at 2018. Whitlake selected Penn State over Oklahoma State, North Carolina State, Oregon State, and Iowa State, while Bravo Young passed up offers from Arizona State, Oregon, North Carolina, and Nebraska. I mean, Tony, i got to be honest. It's enough already. I know this is great news for Penn State, but is it good news for wrestling? I, I, these are huge gets for Penn State. This is huge news for them and, and all the Nittany Lion fans, but for college wrestling fans, I think they want to see Penn State stop getting these huge guys, especially a guy like Bravo Young, who is really favored to probably go to Arizona State. So for Arizona... To, to to lose out on on him I think was a big shock so Penn State's they they've got to figure they've got this figured out how they can get all this top talent in with money I mean they're getting it done I want to know where all the scholarships are coming from I'm trying to do the math and I can't get it all to add up are some of these kids taking a lower offer to wrestle at Penn State in, in my opinion, I think we need more scholarships in wrestling. It's really, really sparse. So to see these top guys go into these teams, you got to think that there's all the ways that these, you know, Penn State is making it happen. I don't know what that is. If it's maybe the promising the Nittany Lion Club when they graduate, maybe getting them a money, some money that way. But they're definitely coming to Penn State on no scholarship or a very, very low scholarship, expecting to maybe get one their junior or senior year. Now, I'd be lucky to get milk money if I went and took an offer from Penn State. I can guarantee you that. In other Big Ten recruiting news, Ryan Caroli announced that he would enroll at Northwestern in the class of 2018. Caroli is currently ranked third nationally at 170 and projects out at 184 for the Wildcats. Northwestern has also received verbal commitments from Fargo runner-up Anthony Cassiopeia and top-ranked Michael Beard. Yeah, the additions of how Brewer, they're already paying off. We can see with these big recruits. Both those verbals, solid gets for the Wildcats. Absolutely. There's other, you know, higher recruits out there probably than these guys, but they're they're right up there. So to see them really flip the script on all the fans thing and all the Wildcats are done. It's gonna take them a couple of years to rebound with this coaching staff shake up. They're, they're getting it done. They're putting together some solid recruits. I mean, that whole lineup is pretty wide open, so that's probably a pretty nice selling point for them to these athletes. Best academics in the Big Ten and an opportunity to start as a true freshman. Yeah, the, the opposite selling point of Penn State. <laughs> They've got everything open. They they have struggled to get some recruits in because they've left. They've transferred. So the opportunity to not only get those academics but start as a true freshman, that's got to be, uh, you know, eyeballs. And the eyeballs got to light up for a lot of these young kids. Yeah, tip of the cap to Coach Storniolo and company at Northwestern. All right, Tony, I'm going to give you an opportunity to wrap up this show because we are sadly out of time. What a great show. Previewing 25 pounds at heavyweight Division One wrestling. It's right around the corner. Competition starts in a week. We'll be right here on Global Wrestling News bringing you the action. Follow along every single Friday. I'm Tony Hager. This is Scott Casper, and this has been Global Wrestling News.